but it also revealed God's influence. Uh, Jesus goes on to say, upon this rock I will build my church. I want you to know something else about the church. We don't build it. If it's anything of worth, we don't build it. And we could build a social organization that grows, you know, honestly. And we could have some really neat things happening in the entertaining value. I didn't feel entertained this morning. I, I felt like I was in the presence of God this morning. Amen. 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 Now, they did a great job. <laughs> I'm not saying anything was wrong. I'm just saying that their purpose wasn't to entertain us this morning. We could build an entertaining church and have lots of people come to it and miss God's plan for the church. Amen? Because Jesus said, I will build my church. We've got to invite Jesus here. If this is not a place where Jesus wants to attend, then we have no business asking other people to attend it too, right? Because we've become something less than God intends for the church to be. And Jesus is the one who will build his church. We're not responsible. It takes a lot of weight off of a pastor, let me not tell you. It takes a lot of weight off of your church leaders, doesn't it? It doesn't mean they work any less. It doesn't mean they, they don't work just as hard. It just means the pressure's gone. Because really, we're counting on Jesus to do the work. Amen? Amen. We're counting on Jesus to bring the results. We're counting on Jesus to change people's hearts because we can't change them anyway. Amen? Amen? Amen. No matter how hard we try, I, I can't make you accept Christ. I can't argue you into, you into the kingdom. But I can tell you about the greatest friend I've ever had. And I can't ask God to work in your heart and change your heart so that you can know him too. I can't ask God to do something special in you. Our purpose is not to make the church grow. Honestly, our purpose is to carry out God's will in our lives and see what God does with that. Amen? Yes. And it's been my experience as I've tried to follow this in my ministry that God's grown the church. <laughs> yeah? Because people are looking for authentic faith. They're looking for people who really believe. They're looking for changed lives. And if they see that in us, then they want that for themselves. Because they're just as lonely. They're just as hurting. They're running just as hard as we ever ran. The only thing that helped us was Jesus. Amen? The only thing that's going to help them is Jesus. When they see somebody that's found Jesus, they want to find Jesus too. God will take care of the growth of the church. Our purpose is really to remove the barriers that keep God from growing the church. <laughs> and what kind of barriers? Disunity, disharmony, uh, barriers of, of, you know, I want to look this way, I want it to act this way, and if it doesn't act my way, then I'm not going to have any part of it. <laughs> I know I'm not describing anybody in this congregation, but you know those other folks down at that other church down the street? They're that way. I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> those things that keep God's Spirit from flowing freely in the body, those things that keep God's Spirit from touching people's heart, because what they see lived out in our lives is not what they hear from the pulpit. We've got to be authentic, saved. That doesn't mean we're perfect. Amen? Amen. Is anybody here perfect? <laughs> Certainly nobody's perfect. But it does mean that we're forgiven. And we live our lives out of that forgiveness of Jesus Christ. And because of that, people see us as authentic. Because that's what they need. They're not perfect either. And they need to know that there's a God who cares about them even if they're not perfect. Amen. He says, I will build my church. It's his church. That's another point I wanted to bring up this morning. It's his church. It's not mine. It's not yours. Anytime we begin to unhealthily look at the church as ours, then we're going to be on the wrong side of where God wants the church to be. Now, I think you need to have a personal identification with a local church. And in that sense, saying it's my church, it's a church I choose to be a part of, it's a church I believe in, it's a church that I see God working in, that's all good. I had one member one time come up to me in our church in Hillsboro, and uh, he said, Pastor, I, I, I want to know, uh, I see some weeds out there in the f flower bed. And he said, can I pull those? 
And I said, tell me, if you saw weeds growing in your flower bed at the home, would you pull them? Well, well, yes. Yes, I certainly would. Well, is this your church? I said, well, yes. Well, you don't have to ask me permission to go pull weeds in the garden, <laughs> flower garden. Right. Man, it's your church. You can do that. That sense of identity with the church is great. But when we get to the point where we begin to say that we control the church, we don't control the church. Amen? Amen. There's only one Lord and master of the church, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen? We talk about being a democratic body. In a few minutes, the church is going to vote whether they, if, if you're still awake anyway, <laughs> you're going to vote whether we're called to, to be the pastor here. Uh, and that's great. That's great. But what I tell the churches that I pastor is, I don't want you to vote your opinion. Your opinion doesn't make a bit of difference. I want you to vote what Jesus Christ tells you to vote. It may differ from your opinion. Amen? I mean, I'm such an engaging, warm, loving speaker that you, <laughs> you just may naturally want to vote for me. But if Jesus says no, or the other way around, by the way, <laughs> If Jesus says no, then you've got to vote no, amen? If Jesus says yes, then you, because Jesus is the head of the church, amen? Yeah. Not us. It's his church. And our responsibility is to get so close to Jesus that we know what he wants done with his church. And then we come together as a body. If we're all doing that and we're all serving the same Jesus, then isn't the body going to be unified too? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because it's not about us. It's about him. It's his church. And finally, I want to get to the power of the church. And that last verse says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you shall bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven. Whatever you shall loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. Boy, there's a lot of statements been made about that. <laughs> you know, of course, if you're from a Catholic tradition, you understand that means Peter has the ultimate say in everything. Uh, I, I believe that's erroneous in, in the interpretation of this passage of Scripture. But I want to make light of what that passage means because I think it's a tremendous privilege for Jesus to have given us the keys as a church, the keys of heaven. I think it's a tremendous privilege. You realize that God and all his awesome power and all his mighty creation, he's created the furthest star out there that we have no idea where it is. He created the, the, the quirk that, <laughs> that we're looking for right now, the particle that we're looking for. He uh, created quarks, and he created that particle that we're looking for right now. The smallest of things. And yet he limited the spread of the greatest news that anybody could hear to his church and said, if you guys don't do it, it's not going to get done. That's a great privilege, isn't it? To be entrusted with the gospel by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To be entrusted with sharing the greatest news anybody could know because it has eternal consequences by our Lord Jesus Christ. What a great privilege, but it's a great responsibility too, isn't it? It's a great responsibility too. We need to take it seriously because we are the only hope for the rest of the world. Because we, if we don't share Christ, then we're gener one generation away from there not being any witness for Christ. Amen? And this young generation, I am so proud of these youth. Man, I've got to know a lot of them by name. Uh, some of them I've got to see in their best moments. Uh, I'm sure I haven't, they haven't revealed any <laughs> bad moments with me. I've got to see this. I've got to see some crazy moments, too, I, I have to admit. Uh, Chad has this game. He's, he's hoping to go on the road with it, but I, I think he's stretching a little far. He plays uh, ping pong with Keith. Caleb. Uh, with, I'm sorry. Caleb, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Caleb has this game. He's playing ping pong with Keith, and they have no ball. <laughs> There's no table. They make noise, and they act like it's there. But I think they need to see somebody. <laughs> but they're great kids. They love the Lord Jesus. 
And I think we're in pretty good shape for a while more. Amen? Amen. But it's important that they see us love the Lord Jesus too. It's important that the savannas and the, the little ones that are here among us see us representing Jesus too. Because we are the hope of the world, folks. It's a great privilege, but it's a great responsibility. Let me read to you a passage that, that covers that. It's found in Romans 10, chapter 14. Romans 10, chapter 14, it says, How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? If there's no one to tell them, then they can't hear and they can't receive the Lord Jesus Christ. The church's purpose is to be founded on Jesus Christ, to, but to share Jesus Christ with the whole world so that Jesus can build his church, so that Jesus can impact their lives, so that they can come to know him, a personal Lord and Savior. Our identity is Jesus Christ, honestly, in short. I could have said that at the right at the beginning, and it probably would have been better, right? I mean, I, letting you out early would have been a good thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> Our identity is Jesus Christ. Our purpose is to be built up, to batter down the gates of death by telling people the good news of life in Jesus Christ. Our power, our power is the giving of those keys by Jesus Christ to us. We can't do it ourselves. Jesus can do it through us. Amen? Amen. I believe that's the church that God wants me to pastor. From talking to your leadership, I believe that's a church that God wants you to be. God wants you to be a church that impacts this community with the good news of Jesus Christ. Will you bow with me, please, in prayer? Father, I thank you for... Lord, I thank you for the wonderful sense of your spirit that's here in this congregation today. I thank you, Lord that you've made your presence evident through the worship time that we've had together. Lord, that you've spoken to us through your word, even if my words didn't say anything, your word never returns void. And so, Lord, I pray that whatever decision you would have us to make today, that we would make it before we leave this place. Lord, that we would choose you as our foundation. Lord, that we would build our lives upon you. And Lord, as we build our lives, Lord, that we would build it in such a way that we fulfill the purpose you have for our lives, that you have for our church, that others would see Jesus in us. It wouldn't glorify us in any way. But ultimately, they would want to come to know the one whom we know as well. Father, only you can change people's hearts. And I pray, Lord, that you will change our hearts today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. I know the church has some business to do, but I want you to know my wife and I would be hanging around for a while. If God spoke into your heart, I, I, I'd say to you, normally I always give an invitation at the end of a service, and we could do that this morning. But I'm giving you this invitation. God's spoken to your heart. There's many people who know Jesus who would love to share with you how you can know Jesus here today. And I'm going to be hanging around for a while. Look me up. No greater joy that I have as a Christian. As a Christian. It has nothing to do with me being a minister. No greater joy I have as a Christian than to tell someone how they can know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So if you don't know him and you want to know him, forget the vote. <laughs> Come on back and talk to me about Jesus. I'm going to be back here in the back, okay? Thank you. Thank you.